Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Uh, you're watching part of our 16 week uh, Woodworking 101 class. It's uh, 16 weeks of lessons on all of the basics that you need to become a woodworker. Uh, for lesson number one, we have decided to break that up into eight small subsections because there's going through all of the tools that are needed for uh, the woodworker and kind of getting the highlights of each one is a little bit tedious. So I just thought I'd break it up into eight small sections. So this is just the next section uh, in, that, uh, in that lesson number one. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, so now I want to talk about the tools that I use for measuring, marking, and layout. So layout is when I've got a board and I need to lay it out maybe to, to put a mortise in or to put a tenon or to lay out where I'm going to be uh, maybe, joining, maybe joining two boards together. And so we've got to mark it on the board somehow. And so layout tools are kind of an important thing to have. Uh, one of the most common things that you'll use is a square. This is a woodpecker square. It's a high precision square. And it's kind of expensive, uh, but it's a pretty handy tool to have. It has a, a rim here so that a ledge, so if you hold it against the edge of your board, you can slide this thing back and forth, and it always maintains a perfect 90 degrees to this. So if I want to draw a line here, then I know that this is a perfect 90 degree uh, corner uh, to this edge. So that's handy to have. Okay, and these come in different sizes. You can get them larger or smaller, and you can also buy cheaper squares that are like that. Uh, another square hand that's handy to have is something like this. This is called a tri-square. And if I'm drawing something here, and I wanna draw, oh, say a line that's 90 degrees to that, then I would need something like this. If we have this, because it has this ledge here, I'm not really gonna be able to get this down flat to the surface. Over here you can see it's not flat to the surface, so I'm not going to be able to draw a nice straight line. Plus this, this piece is just flat both ways, so I can draw that 90 degree line, and I can keep it nice and flat. This square is called a tri-square. It got its name because if we're joining two pieces of wood together, say like this, then this tri-square allows you to try this corner to see if it's square, 90 degrees. So that's how it got the name, T-R-Y, tri-square, it's to try a corner to see if it's square. Um, another square that's very handy to have is this. This is a combination square. This basically does a combination of things. So we can loosen it there, we can put it this way uh, with that flush down there and it will also work as a tri-square, kind of like that one did. We can also use this as a marking gauge. So if I open the, loosen it there, and maybe I'll take it out to two inches, and you can know if you can see that there. I'm gonna stop that right at uh, the two inch mark. And then I can do a layout. If I, if I need a line, for example, that's just exactly two inches away from this edge, then I can use this to mark my mark a line that's two inches away from the edge with that. If I wanna check the depth or the thickness of something, we can do that as well. Works the same similar way. And we can read what the what the measurement is from there. Or if I want to make a cut that's maybe halfway down through this or make a mark, then I can do that. And I can see the point that's maybe halfway down on the board. So it's good for layout. This can even come out and this thing works to check a 45 degree angle in addition to the 90 degree angle. So a combination square is pretty handy to have. It also does all the basic functions that uh, let me put this back together here. Okay, this will also perform the same functions that uh, this woodpecker square will because it has the, the rim there. So if I need to mark a line that's 90 degrees to the surface, I can do that too. I can just put this here and mark a line 90 degrees to the edge. It's also convenient if I want to mark a line that's 45 degrees from an edge. I can line that up there, and I have a line here that's now 45 degrees to the edge. So with these different tools, we can get uh, our layout done pretty well. Um, this, if you're gonna get a combination square like this, I would recommend getting a good one. There are quite a variety of them out there. Some pretty cheap, some a little bit more money. If you can spend in the, oh, 30, $40 range and up, you can get a very high quality one that's very accurate and very precise. 
you know, very easy to use. Um, sometimes you'll need a measurements that are even more accurate than this. So for example, <clears throat> I have a planer, so oftentimes I'll plane wood down and I need to check and see how thick the wood is when I'm done. Or I'll need to see the diameter of a screw or a bolt. And for that, we have calipers, digital calipers. So these will allow me to check the exact thickness of a piece of wood. So this is 0.816 inches. And it works, of course, for millimeters or inches. And so a caliper, a set of calipers, is also pretty handy to have. And for most of my layout purposes, I like to use a sharp pencil. There are a number of woodworkers who like to use a, a tool which will put a scratch in the wood or a line or a groove in the wood. And that's also an option. A lot of hand tool woodworkers will prefer this. And it's just a lot thinner than a pencil line, but I prefer to just keep uh, very sharp pencils. And I also use <clears throat> a set of rulers. I use a half inch, uh, well this may be a little bit thicker than half, but I use a half inch, a small, a small sized ruler for checking small measurements. This one has both inches and centimeters and it has a conversion scale on the back. Sometimes you'll need to convert. And I'll also use a larger ruler for bigger measurements. And I have a, a ruler that's bigger than this as well. I use stainless steel, or I prefer stainless steel for all of these. And of course in the shop you have to have a tape measure. This is probably the most common tape measure that somebody will buy, a 16 foot tape. And that's a good tape, nothing wrong with it. Um, but I also like to have something smaller to carry around. So Stanley makes the, these Fat Max tapes and they're actually very accurate in a six foot length. And there's really nothing in the wood shop that you're going to be building that's any longer than six feet usually, maybe occasionally eight feet. Uh, so I also use these DeWalt nine foot tape measures and um, I keep these around all over the shop. They have a magnetic back to them so I can just throw them somewhere and I've got these uh, basically magnetically attached to most of my tools around the shop so wherever I'm at I have a tape measure that I can grab and use. And so that's it. That's kind of the basics that you need, the things that you need for measuring and layout. Hi everybody, I wanted to say thank you very much for watching and I have made a, a couple of small changes. Uh, I've decided to take the first video, the first lesson of the 16 week course and break it into eight subsections. When I got done filming it and I got done editing it, it was pretty long, it was about an, almost an hour and a half and I thought that was too much for anybody to sit through. So I just broke that down into eight categories, one for each uh, subsection. I'm gonna to try to post one each day. So one, this one's coming up now, and then I'll do one each day until they're all out, and then we'll try to go, you know, one video per week after that. Okay, so one other thing is that we talk about a lot of tools in this uh, lesson number one, and I just wanted you to have access or to know what each of these tools are. These are the tools that I use every day in my shop. And I have uh, composed a list of all of these tools and links where they can be bought at the best price. And I'll keep a list of that or a copy of that in the description. I'll also have the list in a downloadable, like a PDF format, which I'll put up on my website. Uh, that's for anybody to download who's interested in having a copy of that. Once again, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you found some valuable information in this. I know going through all of the, the tools can be a little bit tedious, but uh, the course should definitely pick up and get a lot more exciting uh, once we get into that. So thanks again, and we'll see you next video.